Hi guys, how's it? In the name of Christ, it's Garabo. Today is, it's your girl Cran K. I keep, uh, uh, yeah, I'm sad. And when I'm sad, I don't like saying Cran K because I feel like people won't take me seriously enough. It's the 23rd of October, of October 2023. Today's the first day of my fast. I thought by now I'd be feeling like viol violated by hunger um, to a point of no return. But I'm okay. It's like 17, 1753. Um, and my fast breaks at 6 p.m. I did tell you guys yesterday that I am going to be eating fruit maybe like two hours before exercise so that I don't faint or feel uneasy like what is this week well I'm only starting to chat now so I think I'll I don't know I can push up to half past six maybe seven we'll see before I eat fruit so that my body is adequately nourished for exercise but yeah, I feel okay. Um, I thought I would be violated by hunger, but I'm, I'm pretty alright. But it's day one, what shall we say? I said yesterday that I'm gonna commence my- that it's gonna be from the 22nd of October to the 22nd of November, but it's actually the 23rd. Because I was explaining that my fast is impending or coming on the- The next day, I'm off my medication, I'm done now, I've taken whatever, and I'm feeling okay-ish. Not okay-ish, I'm okay, I'm not sick anymore, I don't have the flu- one minute. I do not have the cough. The flu, the cold, the whatnot. I wanted to move the camera to a place where I don't know. I feel like it's maybe perhaps better. One minute again. What's up? I switched on a light on this side because I was uncomfortable about how shadowy, shady things were. But I'm not really sure if this light is cool because I feel like I might prefer the other one. Let's switch it off, shall we? That's what I look like with the light off and the light on. I don't like how dark it is back there, how shadowy. I don't know. I don't want to be, I don't want to regret doing that. One minute again. Hi Jo, these are my living conditions, what a what a. I feel like I'm going to regret switching off the light, switching it on. So let me just leave it off and stay with as much natural lighting as I possibly can. Given that it's 17.58. Um, the sun is setting. What was I going to say? There is a speech lag here. I'm struggling with the phone. And yeah, it, it's just, it is what it is. I don't have another device. The other one, one minute again. What's up? The other phone overheats. I've got, I'm recording on this phone now, the other phone, to see if it'll let me record because I'm very disquieted by the speech lag of the iPhone. But anyway, yeah, I'm recording on two devices. One of them is down here. You're not gonna see it, there it is. And I'm gonna probably run with this footage, if at all. Uh, I don't get just suddenly by this particular device because it has those issues. Uh, but I don't know. Depend. It doesn't matter where I look, really. Either way. But let me just look at the iPhone. No, I can't look at the iPhone if I'm gonna use this this footage. I don't know. I prefer this phone because it has no speech lag. Uh, yeah. Even when as I'm looking at it when I'm recording now, it, it's not giving me problems. But it might just stop recording and disappoint the living daylights out of me. But we'll see what we do. I'll, I'll take the risk and I'll look down at this one. But the iPhone is still recording. I started on the iPhone, so I guess I'll grab the first minute of the iPhone and attach it to this. And you'll see the difference. Anyway, uh, let me just put a caveat out there. I think I'm wearing app makeup. I'm not sure I'll make a decision. I also have got a problem with my captions. They're not accurate. I don't have time to edit them. It hurts to edit them. I'm kidding. No, it doesn't hurt, but it just takes time out of me that I don't have. Alongside the fact that they are irreverent, they use a small G for God, and so have mercy on me for that. That's not me, that's the captions. Uh, that's that's CapCut. What else do I want to say? Yeah, look, I've put everything out. Oh, and my silence detector every so often takes out my words, and I don't appreciate that, but the overall message, you understand it. So now that we have put the the caveat out there, let me just get straight into this message. I'm not really sure what I'm going to say. I'm actually starting to get hungry now, and it's 6 p.m., so basically I've arrived at my, my the end of my fast, but I just want to get started with this, and then I'll go and grab a, like a banana and some fruit to get my body juiced up for exercise. All right, guys, look, I, I do feel better. I feel so, so much better. Uh, miles better, astronomically better, but just by going back to exercise alone. Guys, look at my hair. Like, I love my hair. Like, what? Okay, I can't help but look at both phones because I'm not really sure which one I'm going to use. 
I am so besotted with my hair. It's gonna get nappy. I need to take care of this mane of mine, y'all, so that I don't mess with my mane. I can't mess with my mane. Recently, I, I messed up big time with this hair of mine, and I let it sit in a, a protective style for too long, and it was getting all nasty on me but it's cool now it's improved um and i love it yeah i fixed it but like yeah look at how beautiful my hair is such things give me motivation and my skin is also clearing um that's the iphone version this is the the android version i have no new acne ever since starting to use that other product i told you guys about and also uh, the hyperpigmentation is clearing really quickly every morning I wake up and my face is looking brighter and brighter and I'm very grateful uh, so yeah praise the Lord for that I'm on a new brand of vitamin C and retinol and so far it's doing really well for me so thank uh, the Lord Jesus Christ for all that anyway let's get straight into this oh my goodness no I don't want this phone showing over there so far, 3 minutes and 58 seconds and counting that this thing has been recording without giving me grief. I'm really scared. I'm scared. I guess it helps. Look, ooh, it's already hot. It is so hot. It is so... It is so hot. It's gonna switch off. I'm almost certain. I guess I should just keep staring at the iPhone. At this point, let me just look at the iPhone. Because I just feel this phone is gonna disappoint me. It's going to. It is going to. It's going to. Let me just run with the iPhone. That's what's good. Mm. Let's, let's forget about a lot of things. Yeah. Anyway, the sooner I start talking, the better. You're not seeing anything indecent, right? I'll put on myself here. Yeah, that's what's good. It's not a towel, it's a doogie. I know, I've been rapping on saying nothing at all. Let me just, uh, like, just talk. I'm feeling better than yesterday and day before because of exercise. The exercise that I did last night. Um, I'm grateful for that. I didn't do all of my time as I usually do, but you know, we'll ramp up. I did feel a little tired sooner yesterday than normal, but um, that's to be expected. I did, of course, take a break for two weeks because of my sickness, my cough, my flu, whatever it is that it was. It's cured now and I just need to regain my stamina, but thankfully I'm not starting from scratch. I still have my strength. I can still go down low. Uh, yeah, I didn't lose much. Yeah, anyway, y'all, you know, the apostasy is upon us. The great apostasy, the falling away, it is upon us. I keep getting these horrible dreams. People that I I think are Christian, that I, uh, yeah, I think are Christian. I sort of low-key trust them. Nobody's perfect. Doing such evil things in my dreams. Guys, evil, evil, evil. Like, evil on another level. There's a South African YouTuber that I follow, um that I recently just kind of started to back off from because I noticed that he's a little he's starting to get just a tiny bit compromised in his message um I didn't unfollow him I just stopped watching and I had a dream about him I had a dream about him you guys doing such sort of deeds and for like basically it looked as if though he was involved in something dark and on top of that he's compromised uh by compromise I mean like one of those how far is too far before it starts to become a sin when it comes to sexual sin doing all different kinds of sexual acts without penetration and telling yourself that i'm good and this is somebody that's put himself in a position of leadership you know he's leading people he's talking to sheep like a lot of people and standing in that lofty position as a leader uh, yet what i saw him doing in my dream I was like, God, what, why, why, why do I need to see that? And I believe what the Lord is showing me is that there's just so much compromise spiritually in the body, uh, not in the body of Christ, but in people claiming themselves Christian. And some of them are, are really lofty, like they're being looked at by all of us. And their stuff is getting clicked on and yet they're living these double lives. What they're saying on the forefront appears to be voracious sound. What they're saying to everybody appears to be, you know, w okay. Um, but until, until there are like destructive heresies and doctrines of demons slipped in, slipped in to this like man's chats or women's chats and they catch people of God that aren't Berean because they've been trusted all along. Like, you know when you're running with someone because all along they've just, they've been sort of cool. 
largely cool, mostly cool, and then they go awry. They veer. They take a little bit of a side turn, wrong turn, like the, the like the horror movie. And it's it's disappointing. But never mind it being disappointing. But it's also um, what is this dangerous uh, for followers? You know, uh, uh, again, I don't know which phone to use here. It's dangerous for their followers. All right, uh, this phone is hot like like a, a baked good in the oven. However, it still is recording, so we'll see what happens. But I've been looking at the iPhone. So, and guys, we got things to see. This is which one, which frame, guys. But anyway, let's just keep the both phones recording, because I frankly do prefer the quality of this one, and I prefer the speech sound quality of this one. H sand. So now I don't know what to do. Mm -mm. We're gonna keep looking at the iPhone. We gotta protect ourselves from damages in the heart of losing footage and looking on the side in Jefela and people seeing all of this acne, all of this acne struggling to come back up for air again, or acne scarring. Yeah, I saw this guy doing some pretty like strange stuff. I won't get into the details of it because it was graphic. Uh, but you know, like yeah, basically just sexual acts. You know, making out a whole bunch and going as far as you can go before sex. And uh, I guess one should say, Karaba, don't judge, but we we should because as Christians, we have got a job to judge other Christians, other believers type thing judgment begins with the church of jesus christ and we need to call out the immoral man from among us um i remember that actually there was um a, a statement once upon a time that i heard on the show being mary jane back in the day when i used to watch it and mary jane upon talking with lisa was like to lisa oral sex is still sex lisa you know lisa trying to pride herself in being celibate and mary jane is like oral sex is still sex and while that's a secular show and mary jane is secular that statement accurate you know like if yeah it's, it's all sex and you know you're compromising you're falling you can't just like get how close to the edge can you get before you fall off and what the lord is showing me is that this is a man it's, it's basically the thing that i've been crying about the thing that i've been lamenting about guys that you know we we trust people and uh, since this person is sitting in the body of christ this man it's a man okay he's sitting in the body of christ he's he's chilling among us as one of us and he's not yet married last time i checked he's not yet married he's i guess maybe looking for a wife and if that's the case that's a man from what i saw in my dream he was not even saved you know uh but he's talking like a believer online and he's very believable because he's not riddled with heresies he's not the kind of person that you will click away from if i'm lingering on him and i i, I consider myself quite berean if i'm lingering on him then you know that he's you know believable He's kind of like Ravi Zacharias, you know how he had a sexual perversion and perished, I would imagine, in his sins, but all the way up until his death, ain't nobody know that Ravi was on that tip, but when you listen to his apologetics, when you listen to his sermons, he's, he's preaching, you would, you would swear by his salvation. You would, you would like properly sell your own toe to like stand up for that guy and then after he passes away all that rubbish gets exposed about him the disquieting thing about such men right or people in the body of christ that are believable they're standing on podiums podiums they're standing on rooftops again i'm recording on two different devices i don't know which one to look at they're standing at devices they're standing on podiums they're standing on rooftops talking as christians they're largely there we go i lost it yeah i lost it it's gone so i guess all we got is the iphone dun, da, 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 da. all we got is the iphone i lost it and i mean this room is not even all that hot whatever at least now we know that all we have is the iphone and that would be okay if it didn't have, give me such a bad speech lag problem that would be okay uh you guys if not okay sorry these are people sitting in the body of christ this gentleman is not married yet okay um so he's likely looking for a wife unless he feels called by god to be celibate and if so no he's not really called the sexual perversion i saw in my dream was really quite exorbitant um if a man like that is looking for a wife a man like that is looking therefore for a wife in the body of christ he's looking for a wife inside the church guys he's looking for one of us that are still single waiting on god for husbands and such men can throw and i'll speak for men at this point perhaps there are females of this nature but remember 
I'm a woman, so I will speak from a vantage point that's slightly biased. It's only natural. Uh, he's looking for women like me. And if a woman is holding, okay, you know what? I'm just, what time is it? I need to go and eat fruit because um, I don't want to be weak during exercise. It's 15 minutes past six. Let me do this part and then if I have a second part, I'll eat fruit in the middle and then we'll come back. Or maybe I'll eat fruit as I chat through the second part. If there's a second part, I might just talk one part. But what I'm trying to explain to you guys is men like these are dangerous. You can convert that to women. Please don't come at me with like a ton of bricks on some kind of way. You're bisexually. You're, you're the sex, you know. Uh, your sexism is a thing like season to this plus my ministry is for women at the end of the day I keep saying that however when a person has been given prophecy they can prophesy to all genders um, In so far as they understand their place their position that a woman is not to preach to men or exercise authority over them So given that this is a prophetic uttering through a dream I can speak to guys it is in the scriptures validated that that's a thing Deborah was a prophetess you can prophesy as a woman but you cannot preach you can't be a, a pastor and so all female pastors repent and proper sit down in the pews and listen instead of talking i understand it's 2023 but you need to hear what god has to say about you uh so yeah you can evangelize as a woman reach people for jesus but you have no business opening a church i'm just saying unless it's a church for just women which is kind of strange because where you're gonna get male leadership that's always been important but that's another story for another day okay guys i'm not gonna labor I just want to talk share my own story the great apostasy is upon us and never mind the great apostasy but also that which can influence apostasy in a person I will tell my own story looking at the time I have these stories for days but I'm back to exercise now so I can't be doing three four part series videos so I'll try and keep it as succinct as possible I have ever since coming to the Lord Jesus Christ been quite mature as a Christian I started out fast already like a very quick learner I never crawled for too long I never was on spiritual uh, what do you call this thing milk for too long I graduated to meet really quickly because I was I just became fervent real fast God saw it fit to do that I was self studying I was studious I was self sort of kind of discipled I went on the internet blah blah all that jazz you've heard my testimony in various videos I've done you can check them out in the past where I explain over and over I, I, I always touch on facets of my testimony in every video I do so h here and there you might catch wind of how I got saved but how I got discipled was fast and furious properly uh, uh, pretty much myself I, I sort of kind of discipled myself I, I found pastors and preachers that helped me alone and they were not even in my country so yeah disappointing that is South Africa for you uh, so because I grew as quickly as I did as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ I fast got to a conviction the first thing that actually convicted me of sin was sexual sin barriers or what under heaven it takes to truly honor God when it comes to the body that that I ran with faster than a strike of lightning okay self-respect self-regard for your body taking care of this vessel is something I never toggled with for too long I remember when I was first investigating the things of Christ before I fully surrendered I was uh, talking uh, before I fully surrendered I was f I was having a conversation with this one friend she wasn't really a friend she ended up stabbing me in the back with witchcraft a lot of my girls done did that this girl the two of us were both interrogating the things of Jesus we weren't fully surrendered both of us but we were definitely talking about it we, we would both ultimately join the church but she would end up apostate she is a witch one of those dabbling mixing a whole bunch of things and I, I keep saying this and I will keep saying it over and over again I like to say it and I'll keep saying it. I will keep saying it uh, when you grow up in a country that is lukewarm like South Africa like a Christian nation countries where there is no persecution for Christians and the nation calls itself Christian there is always a risk being amidst people who are who've been professing Christ who've been talking as Christians who've been saying that they're born again all their lives they claim to have been saved all their lives do you understand and yet they have lived among unsaved people without those unsaved people feeling uncomfortable about their sinful state 
their lives that they are living that are that leave a lot to be desired in terms of holiness and yeah if at all you're truly born again people around you should not be comfortable with with sin they should low-key find you bigoted they should low-key find you dogmatic they, they should hide themselves a little bit sort of kind of gossip themselves in your presence they should be scared to just drop the f-bomb the s-bomb like swearing should they they should know that oh goodness god i was here um you know don't talk like that she might just you know give you a jesus bashing they she might just wham you in the face with a bible yeah because i mean she's one of those right a christian should make people uncomfortable that are in their sin they sh you like you you can you should not be a christian truly born again right hey what's up when the next part uh, one minute Christians in the presence of other of unbelievers should not just be glided by not that it is our intention to make people uncomfortable but the Holy Spirit in us does that plus our lives we we are snooty they they people should uh, gaze upon us as you know iffy snooty judgmental like the world is always in a rush to wreak havoc in our holiness and if the world is not uneasy in your presence and is just gliding smoothly ice skating all around you drawing circles either you are burying your christianity which renders you an, an, an unbeliever or you are super lukewarm and the first one when i say that you're burying your christianity with render which renders you an unbeliever it is based on the scripture that if you deny christ before men he will deny you before the father so you are either a christian behind closed doors but not in front of people in which case you don't qualify as a christian according to the scriptures you're just not saved because people should be uncomfortable around you they should be disquieted in your midst they, they should not be able to just carry on in your presence anyhow la -di da one minute had to open for the cat yeah people should not be just la -di da doing whatever they want to do in your presence without any disquiet at all they should be uncomfortable all right not that you're trying to like i said it's not like you're trying to make them uncomfortable they just should be because they're lost and they just want to carry on living their lives how they want to live their lives and you are this thing that makes it kind of hard for them to just be free living those lives they feel judged by you even if you're not outwardly judgmental or saying anything they just feel judged by your consecrated so if you're smooth sailing amidst friends in the world um and you're calling yourself a christian how what's uh, you're not a born again you're not you're not saved you're not guys you're not and this is uh, ha hard for people to take in their stride but it's just the disquieting thing about growing up in a country like south africa that calls itself christian and everybody in these streets uh, is is allegedly apparently filled with the holy spirit uh, however there are people i am a south african citizen that grew up amidst professing christians as an irreligious kid growing up in the country that is christian and i never ever once felt judged or uncomfortable in the presence of my that said they were christian no one that i've ever collected in my life as a friend ever ever made me feel like yo i don't say that in front of the rat or yo i don't say that in front of pinky yo hey girl or feeling like how we can't invite pinky once was wrong you know how she is feeling like we can't invite her she's gonna be a, a party pooper She's going to be a mood dampener. Come on, no, don't invite her, girl, because next thing she's going to be out here, like, whipping out her Bible or whatever, all up in our girl. I've never had a friend that ever made me that uncomfortable, but, and yet, I grew up in, uh, amidst so many going friends. On Sundays, they were in church with parents. When I got to corporate South Africa, I, I would just keep hearing these people talking about how blessed and highly favored they are, how they were in church on Sunday, how it's part of their itinerary some of them would even upon introducing the get introducing themselves in the office like as new employees go induction they would say hi my name is lerato shabalala and yeah th i am this and that i used to work for standard bank and i'm glad to be at mtn uh my hobbies are reading and writing and cycling and i love the lord jesus christ i'm saved hallelujah and people in the auditorium would be like amen you know ain't no hate or whatever and this lerato upon introducing herself as a christian to an entire team of colleagues you would gossip with her you would do like proper the, the, all manner and kinds of misdemeanors in the sight of god you would commit with them and her tall tales massive stories 
about her life the boyfriend i'm living with my boyfriend or i was in the club this weekend i was this and that that's lerat or this this blessed and highly favored person that introduces herself as a christian in the auditorium that induction day is is properly explaining to you what she did on the weekend as you're explaining to her i spent it with my boyfriend we went to this particular wine tasting it was so much fun and then we uh, did this and that blah blah and then she would also bring in her stories telling me how it is that she you know visited this one club did that she like you know smoked that and yeah, basically a worldly lifestyle a worldly lifestyle never did i ever feel in the presence of this metaphoric lerato this proverbial lerato never did i ever feel like oh and i can't be telling lerato about my escapades on the weekend with my man i can't you know again when women talk but let's talk about sex baby let's talk about you and me when you're busy talking about sex with friends with friends that are colleagues with yeah and this chick is partaking in this conversation as a doer of this deed i'm fornicating i'm lost of course but like yeah so are you because you're telling me about this is what my man did blah blah and yeah that th those were my experiences those were my experiences growing up in a, in a christian nation where people are calling themselves believers yeah i was able to have, talk about sex with them talk about you and me as as ones who can relate in these conversations i was able to talk about clubbing partying i was able to talk about you know random illegalities in the sight of god with them and never feel like i, I can't talk about this with lerato because lerato is just gonna be like bash me with a bible on my head i've never been bible bashed by a conglomerate of what i imagine to be judgy christians as a sinner i never felt out of place i never was unable to invite them to the club i never ever felt like oh old daughter bora she's gonna be a party pooper and then i get born again and i realize that that's a thing when you grow up in a country like that like mine when you grow up in south africa as one who has apparently been christian all your life there is a massive risk that you're gonna get you're gonna be comforted or made to glide very easily in the aisles of corridors of people that are fellowshipping with you in christ and all of y'all are just debauched all of y'all are debauched all of y'all are lost you ain't never known christ from a bar of soap ain't nobody calling out anybody iron is sharpening iron not the bible says as iron sharpens iron so one man sharpens another nobody's sharpening anybody and so nobody is gaining conviction of sin until a garabo who was irreligious unchurched not really interested in going anywhere near the kingdom of heaven all the way up until the age of 26 growing up amidst a majority christian friendship circle and family circle and then she gets born again and guess what happened at my newly saved like season i was tempted indeed as i was a south african christian to just carry on doing things as normal i properly was i had conviction of sin I believe I was newly saved because I, I don't know, no, I, I, I recall the exact time when I got born again, the exact date. I, I, it was in the bathroom, on the shower, and the floor crying over my messed up relationship that had just ended, blah, blah. And I cried out to God and I felt the peace of God come into me. I believe that's when I, I gained the Holy Spirit. That's when I got truly born again. But in the run up to, I was convicted of sin. I, I was. And um, even after that crying to God and going to church every Sunday, redemption there was still sanctification to be done and having grown up in south africa this nation of ours this rainbow country having grown up in this rainbow country i i was tempted to just carry on like normal like one of the the, the people that took me to church on sunday when i was i posted a post on facebook on some i'm not really sure what's going on maybe should i go to church i'm not sure what what because i was convicted of sin it was a colleague that was one of those professing christians i'd always known her as a christian and she commented on some i'll pick you up this sunday with my husband and lo and behold she did with her husband and child and they took me to rhema and i fellowshiped with them but this chick before she got married she and i used to talk about sex baby you and me we used to talk about it with our boyfriends like i would explain my experiences you know private conversations with a girl my because we were tight we were friends uh, what's going on in my bedroom and she would tell me what's going on in her bedroom tell me what she does with her boyfriend and this was happening all the way up by oh and she was living with this boyfriend of hers right they were a living uh cohabiting couple with a son uh, not married yet and she we would exchange notes on what we do in this private environment and then she got married so now she was made an honest woman 
uh, however prior to make being made an honest woman she she had this lifestyle she was in church every sunday blah blah and she was one of the people that picked me up at that stage they were already married but i knew that she was you know partaking in these deeds prior to that prior to lignano they were sexing it up a storm type thing they had a child for crying out loud so i mean yeah um before marriage and yeah this is the woman that took me to church she ended up putting a whole bunch of witchcraft on me she turned her back on me betrayed the living daylights out of me hated it when i got super fervent for the same jesus that she hoped i would get close to because she heeded the call to send a woman to church that wanted to start going to church and she grabbed the opportunity to pick me up even though i had my own car yeah and she she did this for something like four weekends until i started taking myself yeah okay uh cool beans and uh, bananas that's what was happening so because after getting saved me nage i was tempted to make like thy friend i was tempted to just be like her i was not in the bible i wasn't studying it as much as i was supposed to i was lukewarm ish as a new convert lukewarm ish the lord drew me to him fast and furious because he saw my nation he saw my country he saw that she's gonna be one of those la da skin of her teeth like she will be convicted of a lot of sins and yet because of making an observation in her environment she will think it's nothing much it is basically a battle with nature versus nurture right nature is my country nature is who it is that i am genetically it's my country men it is my biological makeup and right now it's lukewarm and that's how it's always been that's my environment but then nurture that's god that that's the one who inspires in you a, a, you know a cut above the rest type personality he's the one that differentiates you from the next guy and the next guy and the next guy god almighty is the one that makes the all the difference in how you walk with him right and in a country where there's so much compromise falling apart um people would be tempted do you understand to after now giving their lives to christ saying that sinner's prayer just kind of carry on as normal because that's how all my christian friends have always been i had christian friends in high school and everything and they were always in church and i was tempted to just default to what they are except only difference now would be that i go to church every sunday just like them the lord would have nothing to do with that he saved me and then after saving me wangi sangula fast and furious he, he cleansed me he made me researchy he used a guy to do that because he knew that i was not i need whatever was my biggest motivation in life he used it to cleanse me i developed a crush on a guy that i thought was christian and he was one of those lukewarm no difference conversations with him you don't feel like i can't say that in front of this guy i can't yeah but i had such a big crush on him and i found out he was christian i found out that he was very serious about the things of god they regarded him very loftily to a point of training him to be an elder in the church and i was like oh in order to be a wife of a guy like that for crying out loud i gotta be one of those churchy girls so i started studying how to be a biblical wife i wanted to get married and i liked this guy a lot and i realized that i liked him because he was all churchy and christian he was different from all these other randos in these streets so i got myself trained on biblical womanhood and upon getting trained on biblical womanhood i just got trained on godliness period because it is impossible to teach biblical God womanhood without teaching repentance without teaching salvation without teaching chastity without teaching it and the teachers the teacher in particular that i followed a lot of videos of and read a lot of content or watched a lot of content of was paul washer because he's got like a whole series that he dedicated a lot of his time to basically training biblical womanhood i found the right the right guy i found the right guy and paul washer was whamming bah, whamming bah, sin down the throat he was just making it clear that you can't live like the world and call yourself christian forget about it like you can't so upon clicking on a lot of Paul Washer's content and Tim Conway my, my testimony is like there's a lot of facets to it but this is just one of them okay a lot of things ultimately got me very serious about God uh, a lot of this this content was just videos in Jefela on salvation sanctification regeneration all that after after getting whammy uh, by with conviction concerning you know fornication and all that jazz i then was led to other places that then led to other portions of discipleship in me that's how i grew so that's why i say no south african man or woman discipled me i was discipled by the u.s i was discipled by preachers in the u.s i was discipled by dead men 
Puritans. I was discipled by yeah. So it's a, it leaves a lot to be desired in terms of South Africa um, and what's going on here spiritually. I was given my temptation to just do whatever. It therefore is necessarily true that a lot of people in this country that call themselves Christians don't even see that there's something wrong with their lives. They don't see anything wrong with constantly hanging out with worldly friends, getting drunk, partying, clubbing. They then get, okay, Coco Grace, for instance. Sexual sin was preached against uh, to the youth a lot. Hardly ever mentioned in the main services, uh, main congregation, but the youth group used to talk about it a lot. So kids in the youth groups, Sago Grace, were convicted that sexual sin is wrong. It was not so violently etched into their understanding the fear of God and the spiritual ramifications of just compromise that they would imagine themselves on very hot water in very hot water if they do it anyway because South Africa is like that and because even when they teach it they teach it saying that it's a sin against God but they don't highlight just the gravity or the magnitude of the sin like you know when you don't preach against sin when you don't ever, when you don't thicken the reality of hellfire and the fact that there is a holiness without which no one will see God. When, when you don't train the fear in people, they will imagine that sins are just like rules and regulations that are highly recommended you stick by. But if you don't, whatever, propitiation is there for you. Grace is there to cover you. Grace will have bound when sin abounds anymore, evermore. There's no fear. Like the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. There is no fear of God taught in South African churches. Even if they teach that fornication is wrong, a sin against the body, they don't communicate it in a way that helps them understand how grievous it is to a holy God who can utterly shut you out and render you an unbeliever. Say, depart from me, worker of iniquity, because you're walking in iniquity when you don't work your own salvation out with fear and trembling. It's this phone and it's stammering. When you don't work your own salvation out with fear and trembling and test to see if you're in the faith, and beat your flesh into submission and strive unto holiness you are facing a risk of not even truly being saved at all because there is no reverence in you and no fear of god you're not freaking out like you if you fall into masturbation you don't spend the next month freaking out basically grieved by that sin and asking yourself am i even saved how in the world can i just easily fall into that when you easily just allow profanity to leave your lips do you not start to think well, what, what is heaven thinking what's going on over there when you easily allow your eyes to just ogle at this in the streets at every skirt that is passing or every pant that is passing and you don't recognize what god has to say about looking at a woman with lust and so therefore committing adultery with the heart if you have no reverence for god to a point of checking yourself to recognize how sinful you are against the holy god are you on that day of god are you of god are you of god where is the holy spirit where where how is he not raising you up to feel like trash when you walk in trash amidst people who are easily gliding in trash do you understand what i'm saying like are you getting where i'm coming from the holy spirit is grieved by sin and we can grieve him but when the holy spirit is grieved by sin within us he doesn't just leave us be he doesn't just leave us be the bible says that he disciplines the one whom he loves a father disciplines the son that he loves so if at all you're just being left to be gliding in sexual sin or getting real close to the border and however not quite skipping that border and there is nobody bringing you back is calling you home yo are you are you saved do you have him who calls back home because you can't just indefinitely grieve the holy spirit without ultimately capitulating to him he's irresistible he will make your life a living nightmare when you're living in sin like the holy spirit will not just let you go so if at all if at all your life is just blah and then nothing is calling you back nothing is convicting you like yo <laughs> how long is a piece of string that's what you need to ask yourself how long is a piece of string how long is a piece of string that is on the back of carabo versus yours who is loose in your what you call morals because the Lord is the one that yanks that string. So the farther out you go, the more hard it should be for you to keep going. Because that string is what's yanking you back. So how long is your piece of string? And if your piece of string is, this, is the diameter of the earth, 
You can uh, run circles around this earth without God pulling you back, honey. You are not in Christ. How long is a piece of string? I would go so far as to beg the answer and say that it is the exact same size for all Christians. It should be. It should be short. The string that God uses to pull people back in should be short. You should not be able to stretch out far and wide into the wilderness in sin and not be yanked back. And if you're not being yanked back, if your conscience is not beating you down, if you are not having a hard time sitting in certain environments, then you're not saved. You, you, you can grieve the Holy Spirit, but you cannot grieve him indefinitely from within you and not be brought back. However, it is possible to grieve the Holy Spirit from without you. He can convict you of sin, but unless you surrender, he won't come in. And what I'm trying to explain right now is that there are people that are busy grieving the Holy Spirit from without. And so there is no piece of string in them. There is nothing bringing them back in. And so they are grieving him to a point where he will now walk away from them. The Lord will pursue people. Many are called, but few are chosen for a certain season following which he will just walk away. He will just leave you be. He stands at the door and he knocks. But there comes a time when God hands people over to a reprobate mind who after convicting them of sin for a season will ignore him, not love the truth, take pleasure in their unrighteousness. So God will let them go. He will let, give them a strong delusion. He will hand them over to their passions, their lusts, because they've not loved the truth that they were convicted by. And so when then you can just fornicate and do all different kinds of things without conviction, that, that's when you, you should wake up and smell the coffee, recognize that the piece of string is not even so much how long it is, it, it, is it? It's that it's not there. It's that there is no Holy Spirit who is a deposited in us, in us to con, uh, what is this? Co um, testify with the Spirit of God that we are the sons and daughters of God. So if you are not being testified on behalf of then you need to recognize on that day that you're not saved. The Bible makes it clear that you need to test to see if you are in the faith. You must strive to make your calling, first and foremost your calling, and then your election, sure. So it's two different things. Your calling, many are called. The scriptures make it clear. However, few are chosen. And the scriptures say that you must strive to make your calling and your election sure. So first you get called. So the Holy Spirit convicts you of sin. This is wrong. This is messed up. Come, come to Christ. Come to me, all of you who labor and are heavily laden and I will give you rest. But some people don't respond to this call. They don't respond to it appropriately. It is those who grab the opportunity and run with it who are then the elect of God. Then the elect of God. Many are called, but few are chosen. Chosenness is election. And so you need to make sure that even though you got convicted of sin and said the sinner's prayer, you need to make sure that you actually responded to the call. Because the Bible says you must strive to make your calling first and foremost, and then your election sure. You got to make sure that after being called, you actually got chosen. Because chosenness is evidenced by fruit, you guys. You will know them by their fruit. The fruit of which are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. In Galatians 5, that state, love, joy, gentleness, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, patience, uh, gentleness. What did I mention? There are nine of them. Go read Galatians 5. Um, and self-control against them, there is no law. If you are not bearing these fruit in increasing measure as you are being uh, sanctified, following your regeneration, you are not born again. So if you're not convicted of sin, if you're not convicted of extremities of sexual sin, if you don't see the Bible for what it is, when where it is written therein, that no one can put hot coals on their lap, on their lap, do you understand? Yeah, and then not burn. So you can't get real close to the edge and hope not to jump over. And you not have your soul actually start to get incinerated. It is an incendiary deed to partake in making out, kissing, petting, groping, oral sex, all different kinds of things other than vaginal penetration. And imagine that you have not had sex. Oral sex is still sex, Lisa. Just like Mary Jane saying to her best friend, oral sex is still sex. And so, like... You need to strive to make your calling and election sure. Just because you were called doesn't mean you were chosen. The scriptures make it clear that there are people who get called and yet are lost and stay lost. That That's what's up. When I was newly saved, therefore, I was on that, like, you know, skinny ice. I was on that thin ice because I was growing up in a country where I didn't feel uncomfortable around Christians. And so ain't nobody going to start feeling uncomfortable around me now that I'm Christian. I grew up in a country where I had a whole bunch of professing Christians around me, but there was no difference between them and I. I didn't feel uncomfortable about saying certain things in their presence, neither inviting them to certain events. And I was tempted to just be like all other Christians in my land. 
in my land that does not persecute Christians. It's it's near on impossible to be lukewarm in a country that disincentivizes Christianity, like China, like North Korea, Iran. Like there, when you choose Christ, you're choosing Christ, and you're gonna have a consecrated life because there is no incentive for you to just profess Christianity for the sake of it. Next thing, the Taliban, because you're in Afghanistan, is all up in your grill. No, people living in nations that are very severely persecuting rarely ever would you find a lukewarmer over there. But in liberated nations who have got freedoms of religion and don't have much persecution of Christians or any religious group in, for that matter, like America, like South Africa, that's where you're gonna find proper like bosom buddies, best friends, chest bumping. One is a whole flagrant debauched rando. The other is calling herself a Christian. And the debauched lady in the question is not even uneasy in the presence of her bestie. She's not uncomfortable in the presence of her best friend. Her best friend, no, she's not uncomfortable in the presence of her best friend, but more than anything, her best friend is not uncomfortable in her presence. Her best friend can keep on inviting her to places. They can keep doing life together, hanging out, birds of a feather, flocking together, peas in a pod, no difference. South Africa produces such believers as those. And by believers, really, let's put that in, in quote unquote marks. Mm, inverted commas, because we cannot uh, assume that they're saved. You, you can't, yeah. So we need to be afraid, be very afraid, ever more watchful, especially given that we're not in Iran as a convert to Christianity. We're in South Africa. And in South Africa, that's where you can have like a whole scheme of best for a whole scheme of friends where one where three of them are Christian and yet the other like five ain't feeling no uneasy way in their presence. They're just all friends and nobody has any issues with anybody. Gumnandi. Friendship with the world is enmity with God, according to the scriptures. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. You cannot love the world and be with God. The love of the world, the, the, the love of the flesh, the love of the eyes and the boastful pride of life. All that stuff is not of God and you're rejected in accordance to the scriptures by the Father. If you walk and roll in these, for they are passing away. And so therefore, given that you are dead, you are dying with an earth that is passing away in and of itself. You have no business being in the presence of life sources. Uh, no, no, no servant. No, what is it? There is no fellowship between light and darkness. So if you are, if your girls, if there is no even mild mild you know removal from you as in you know people are gravitating away from you like you you have become repulsive you are whatever it is that makes them want to vomit if there's no stank no stench that's causing them to you know kind of you know be wary of you when you are newly saved wonder be afraid be very afraid if you're all you're saved if people don't think you stank, if there is, if, if you, when you're in the room, they don't start doing this with their noses. Cause something of you smells holy. Hey guys, you know? Yeah, no, me, like, strive to see if you're in the faith. Um, test yourself to see if you're in the faith. Strive to make your calling and election sure. Check to see if you are born again. If you are not getting even a small little half of persecution upon being newly saved. If, if even lukewarm Christians aren't starting to exhibit. Be repelled by you like you stank. If they don't, they, they don't act in your presence like you've just taken off some pretty, you know, hard knock. You've just exercised sneakers. If they don't start to act that way towards you and, and leave the room. If they don't act like you've just dropped a bomb in a closed elevator and scared from you the moment it opens. Check to see if you're not born again. Because we stank to unbelievers. We do. We, we stank of Holy Spirit. We, it, it's not a pleasant smell to them because the things of God are foolishness to the man who is perishing. They hate disciples. They hate God. Man is born hating God. We are born dead in trespasses and sins and in sins that our parents conceive us. Given our absolute hatred of God from birth and Jay, just because we are that way, uh, we should be regarded as rotten pizza the moment we get born again. Ain't nobody trying to eat that. There will be a few that will be given conviction by the Holy Spirit to embrace you, love you, for he will make out of you fishers of men. But the grand majority of the world will, will treat you like you ain't Jack. They will. They will They will turn their backs on you. They will do anomalous things. Strange, aberrant behavior will ooze out of their pores. They will properly out your gaslight the living daylights out of you and pretend that they did not change on you. But they will have changed in a way that will be observable and felt by you. And so if you don't start to stank like rotten pizza, Man, you probably still fresh out of the oven from Debonese. That's who that's who you is. You're part of them. You are one with them. They can embrace you. You're a fragrance. You're lovely in their midst because you are still partaking in debauchery. It's written in is it one Peter four, somewhere along the way, or maybe five. 
perhaps three, I don't know, that they heap abuse on you because you are no longer partaking in the old deeds. You are no longer debauched, partaking in sensuality, sexual immoralities, orgies, all of these things that are making them fall apart spiritually. You're no longer part of that game. You're no longer in that business. And so they heap abuse on you. They treat you like a stanky pizza that's been in the kitchen cupboard like scullery never mind even refrigerator for 10 days and it's starting to grow mold they will treat you like you've rotten you've lost your swagger you've changed i don't like the way that you are these days but don't say by that way so if you're not zibberized if you're not mistreated by people that you were hanging out with jolly prior to coming to christ you're not saved you should check guys you should really check because your behavior should adjust i was tempted to do this but then god snatched me out from that grain and got me trained up in true godliness and as soon as right so when i got newly saved i was still partying i was still going to the club i was still booty hopping i was still doing all that stuff and i imagine that christianity was a brooch on my shoulder it was like an accessory or whatever right nothing too serious please don't get too deep and heavy i've got now an accessory like all my friends i'm going to heaven finally mm. but i was in the club i was mm, mm, it's a, mm, mm, it's a, I, woo, woo, mm. I was doing all that i was doing all that right in the beginning stages and guys i never i wasn't i i i had quit alcohol for some years even before coming to christ so i was sober all right i remember one time coming back from the club I, in the beginning stages i could go clubbing and it was all good in, in, the, in the hood i could go to the brides and have these like random conversations and it was all good in the hood and the initially like in the first few weeks of my redemption i was able to just carry on as normal but hey they came a time they came a time you guys it, it became rough my life it became rough my life okay i've been speaking for like 55 minutes i need to go and eat my oranges now so let me go and get my fruit go use the bathroom and then come back and explain to you how in the world it became rough more life for me it became rough more life for me to carry on as normal until i eventually hey the holy spirit he is irresistible the grace is irresistible you guys it is impossible to deny him it is impossible to say quick current hardy if he wants you if you've been called if at all the father has drawn you to the son and you can't be plucked out of uh, plucked out of his hands you will be sanctified by fire by force you will be sanctified you will eventually realize it gives me a pounding headache i can't carry on with it anymore and so you will ditch it and it'll be upon you ditching it that all of a sudden you're gonna be like stanky pizza to everybody all right next part